What I'd like to talk about in this video is how we're going to mathematically rotate vectors in two dimensions. And what we're going to find is that these mathematical objects called complex exponentials are going to be perfect for the job. Before talking about complex exponentials, I'd like to first review the complex numbers, denoted by the symbol C. The complex numbers are the set given by the pairing of two real numbers, let's call them A and B, where the B is being multiplied by this imaginary unit called i. And this imaginary unit i has the essential feature that i squared is equal to minus 1. The a here, this first component, is called the real, the real part, and b is called the imaginary part. Now, one of the most interesting parts of the complex numbers is the special rule for multiplying them. If I have two complex numbers, let's say a plus bi and c plus di, they get multiplied to generate the following. Just distributing, I have a times c, then I'm going to have a times di, then I'll have bi times c, which I'll write as bc times i, and finally I have b times d times i squared, bdi squared, and using that essential property of the imaginary unit, that i squared is minus 1, I make the substitution here, and I find that the new real part is given by AC minus BD, and that the new imaginary part, these two terms together, is going to be AD plus BC, all times I. So this is a special formula for multiplying complex numbers. I could be a bit more formal, and instead of writing numbers in the form A plus BI, I could just write them in vector form or an ordered pair form as just AB instead of A plus BI. And I could write, similarly, CD instead of C plus DI. And I could say that the new complex number generated is going to have in the first component AC minus BD, AC minus BD, and the new imaginary part is going to be AD plus BC, AD plus BC. So we have already two ways of viewing the complex numbers. We have numbers of the form a plus bi, and we have ordered pairs that look like a, b, or c, d. Thinking of these complex numbers as an ordered pair, for example, a, b, lends itself to a nice graphical interpretation, where I could plot the complex number right there on the two-dimensional coordinate plane, where the horizontal axis is the real part of the complex number. In this case, that would be a, and the imaginary axis would be the imaginary part of the complex number, in this case, b. In addition to thinking of this number as a point, I could also think of it as a vector, that is, an arrow drawn from the origin to that point. Furthermore, let's say I had another complex number, let's say c on the real axis and d on the imaginary. These two vectors can be added in a normal way, where you complete the parallelogram just like that and then you draw on the diagonal and that diagonal vector is going to be on the real axis a plus c and on the imaginary axis that's going to be b plus d just standard vector addition now the question we're going to concern ourselves with in this video is how do we take one of these vectors in two-dimensional space and rotate it mathematically? That is, can we come up with a computation that we would have to do to rotate one of these vectors? So let's try to tackle this rotation problem. Let's suppose I have some arbitrary vector, which I'm going to call v. And let's give v some coordinates. Let's say v is ab. And it doesn't matter if you think of this as a complex number or, or as just a straight-up two-dimensional vector, whatever. V is going to be AB. So it's going to be A in the horizontal direction and B in the imaginary direction. And what I'm looking to do is rotate V to some new vector, which I'm going to call V prime, through some angle, let's say theta. Okay. Now, this is not totally obvious how you're going to do this mathematically, but I claim it is obvious after we make one additional insight. 
which is we're going to break V up into horizontal and vertical components. So instead of thinking of V as that arrow right there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of it as a sum of two other vectors. This vector, which is completely in a horizontal direction, which I'm going to call Vx. So Vx is completely in the horizontal direction. You can see from this diagram it's going to be the vector A0. And likewise, I'm going to come up with this vector Vy, which is completely in the vertical direction. That's going to be that vector right there which you, you can also see from the diagram, that's going to be 0b. And we take note that v can be thought of as a sum of vx and vy. So this is just called vector decomposition, what I'm doing here. I'm breaking the vector up into two parts, a vector which is completely in the horizontal direction and a vector which is completely in the vertical direction. Now what I claim here is that the rotated vector, which I called v prime, is actually going to be the sum of the rotated versions of these two new vectors. Now, I haven't proven, actually what I'm assuming here is that rotation is what's called a linear operator, which is actually true, but I haven't proven that yet. But we're going to see that this actually makes the calculation very easy to do. So to write this another way, V prime is going to be AB, because my V was AB, I'm going to have AB prime, is equal to vx prime, which is going to be a0 prime. So this is the rotated version of that vector right there, plus the rotated version of 0b, which I denote as 0b prime. And let me actually draw these in, in the diagram here. So the rotated version of vx might look something like that, where that gets rotated by some angle theta. And the rotated version of Vy might look something like that, where this also gets rotated by theta. Hopefully it's quite intuitive why this new vector V prime can be thought of as the rotated versions of Vx, or Vx prime, which is this vector here, and of Vy prime. Now all that remains to be done is to actually calculate what these two vectors, A0 prime, and 0b prime r. Now let me take this vector 0a and move it over here just since the because the diagram is getting a bit busy. So that's vx and then vx gets rotated by some angle let's say theta to form the new vector vx prime. Now to specify the vector vx prime I, I have to write down its horizontal and the vertical components. So its horizontal component is going to be the vector from there to there, and then the vector from here to here. So remember that the length of Vx, which is the distance from here to here, is A. Now upon rotation, the length of a vector doesn't change. So the length of Vx prime should also be A. So the length of this hypotenuse here, of this new right triangle that I'm forming, should be A. So what is the length of this light going to be? Well, it's the adjacent side to theta, so it's going to be a cosine theta. And how about this vertical light? Well, that's opposite to theta, so it's going to be a sine theta. So I claim that a0 prime is going to be a cosine theta in the first component, and in the second component, it's going to be a times sine theta. So that's one vector down. Now we just have to calculate what 0b prime is. And to do that, let me do the same thing. Let me consider this vector 0b. Let me draw it over here. That's going to be v sub y. And that gets rotated over by theta degrees to, let's say, right there. That'll be the vector vy prime. And that angle is theta. Now to specify this new vector, I've got to write down what the horizontal component is, which is going to be that vector there, and what the vertical component is going to be, which is going to be that vector there. Now again, this is simple trigonometry. The length of Vy was B, so that means that the length of Vy prime should also be B. And that serves as the hypotenuse for that right triangle right there. 
Now, what is the horizontal component going to be? Well, it's opposite to theta, so it's going to have a sine in it. So it's going to be b sine theta. But you'll notice that it's pointing in the opposite direction. It's, it's pointing in the negative direction, so I've got to throw in a minus sign there. And now the new vertical component that's adjacent to theta, so it's going to be b times cosine theta. So I claim that the new vector 0b prime is equal to, in the horizontal component, it's going to be minus b sine theta. And in the vertical, it's going to be b cosine theta. And this is all equal to the rotated version of ab, which is called ab prime. And now to finish this up, let me combine these two vectors that I've just derived. So just doing the vector sum, the new first component is going to be a cosine theta minus b sine theta. So let me write that in there, a cosine theta minus b sine theta. And then the new vertical component is going to be a sine theta plus b cosine theta. And there you go. That's going to be the rotated version of AB, which I called AB prime, rotated by theta in the counterclockwise direction. Now you may be wondering what all this has to do with complex numbers. And to make that connection clear, let's return to the definition of complex number multiplication, which was that if I have AB times CD, that the new complex number generated is going to be AC minus BD in the first component, and in the second component, AD plus BC. Now, let's now think of these vectors as complex numbers. And you can see that there's a certain similarity between the forms of this newly rotated vector and of the formula for complex number multiplication. You can see that the A's and B's are in the correct positions. And if I let C be equal to cosine theta, which is going to appear right there and also right there, and if I also let D be equal to sine theta, which is going to be present right there and right there, then I get exactly this formula. So let me repeat that. If I let C be equal to cosine theta and D be equal to sine theta, I can write this new formula as the product of AB and of cosine theta sine theta. Now it turns out that complex number multiplication is commutative, so this product is also the same as this product, cosine theta sine theta multiplied on the left times AB on the right. Now, converting this back to a plus bi notation, I could I could write this as cosine theta plus sine theta times i times a plus bi. This is what I found so far, that if I have some vector, let's say a plus bi, the rotated version a plus bi prime can be written as the product of cosine theta plus sine theta i multiplied by a plus bi. Now notice that a plus bi is the, the starting vector, the non-rotated vector. And the last observation I'd like to make is about this complex number here, the cosine theta plus sine theta times i. Now there's no coincidences here. This is a very special complex number. And it turns out that by Euler's formula, this is equal to e to the i theta, where e is the base of natural logarithms. And this whole thing is called a complex exponential. As you can see, it's a complex number, theta times i, being exponentiated. That, I, that is, I have e to that number. So I can write this product as e times theta i times a plus bi. And again, that's equal to the rotated version of a plus bi which I read as a plus bi prime. 
Furthermore, if I wanted to think of that number a plus bi as that starting vector v, this formula can also be rewritten as v prime is equal to e to theta i times v in the most compact form. And this is the format that I'd like to stop at for this video. Now this formula that I, I have up here in the uppermost line is probably the formula you'd want to use for computations. But the reason I wanted to talk about this formula, or I wanted to derive this formula, is because this is what's going on with the rotations in the abstract sense. That is, formulas of this form, where the starting vector v is being multiplied by a complex exponential, as we're going to see, it's going to not only work for two-dimensional rotations, but it's going to help us understand three-dimensional rotations, which is why I wanted to reach this level of abstraction, so we can use what we learn here to understand three-dimensional rotations, and also what's going on with quaternions. Let me end this video by doing a couple computations. Let's say I wanted to take that original vector, v, which I'll just write as a, b, and I wanted to rotate by 90 degrees counterclockwise. So the new vector might look like that, where I rotate 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians, to form this new vector here. Now, what are the coordinates of this new vector? Well, let me use this formula here. So I'm going to start with a plus bi, and I'm going to multiply it on the left. Actually, you can multiply on the left or the right, since complex number multiplication is commutative, unlike quaternions, by the way. So I'm going to multiply by e to theta, or to the, sorry, to the pi over 2 times i. Now, e to the pi over 2 times i is plain old i, very special feature of Euler's formula. So I'm going to have i times a plus bi. Now I just distribute, so I have ai plus b i squared. Remember, i squared is minus 1, so I'm going to have ai minus b. And writing the real component first, I have minus b plus ai, which I can just write in the order pair notation as minus b a. So that new vector is going to be minus b a. And notice that this is the transformation that you might have learned in high school, where to rotate a point 90 degrees counterclockwise, what you do is you flip the order. Instead of a, b, you have b, a, but you add a minus sign to that first component there. So this accurately reproduces a rotation by pi over 2. And you can, always, you can also do the computation that, um, let's say we want to take a, b, and we wanted to rotate by 180 degrees. So we wanted to rotate by another 90 degrees. What should this one be? Well, common sense would say that's going to be minus a minus b, the rotation by pi radians. But let's verify that. So we're going to multiply by e to the pi i times a plus bi. Now, famously, e to the pi i is equal to minus 1. So I'm going to have minus a minus bi. And written in order pair notation, that is indeed minus a minus b. Hopefully what you've learned in this video is that when we have a two-dimensional rotation and we want to think of it in terms of complex number multiplication, the complex numbers that are doing the job of rotating by some angle theta are going to be the complex exponentials. That is to say, the operational effect of multiplying by a complex exponential e to the theta i times v is to rotate v by theta counterclockwise. And this is what's going on in the abstract sense, and we're going to use this insight to further understand 3D rotations in future videos. So with that, I thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.